Hey everyone, Chomix here. I don't know about you, but I've always really liked Sonic Unleashed. It had a ton of awesome things like a compelling story, high octane gameplay, and a really grand scale of adventure. I won't lie though, I definitely had my fair share of struggles with this game when it came to certain aspects. In fact, I got really close to the end, but never really finished Sonic Unleashed all the way through until pretty recently actually. But despite all this, I've always looked back on the game in a pretty positive light. This game does a lot of amazing things, and I think people have finally come around to appreciate it because a lot of the things that it does are absent in today's Sonic games. When this game first came out, most people weren't huge fans, but now I think it's pretty obvious that we took a lot of what it did for granted. Because Sonic Unleashed is praised left and right nowadays online. It's hard to go a week on Twitter without seeing one of these Sonic Unleashed appreciation posts using the same four pictures. But I digress, I think it's actually pretty cool that such strong opinions on a game can just absolutely flip like that. I do really think that Sonic Unleashed is overall a great game. In fact, there's a lot of people out there that would go as far as to say that it's the best game. Although I unfortunately can't completely agree with this statement as much as I want to. You see, Sonic Unleashed has something holding it back immensely. Yeah, there's a lot of small flaws to it, every game has their fair share, and most of them are pretty forgivable. However, there is one that is the biggest and most egregious of all, and that is exactly what I want to talk about today. It's not the performance issues, it's not the difficulty, it isn't even the Werehog himself. It's the metal collecting. Metal collecting is difficult, but you want to know what's even more difficult? Building a good credit score. And that's exactly where today's sponsor comes in. This video is proudly sponsored by Extra. Extra is a debit card that builds credit and earns reward points like a credit card. Credit cards can be scary. Trust me, I'm speaking from personal experience. Get a bit too trigger happy and bam, before you know it, you're in an uncomfortable amount of debt. But not having a credit card is also a pretty big problem. I mean, how else are you going to build a good credit score? Extra makes credit building safer and more accessible to everyone. Purchases are spotted by Extra, which then auto pays by the next business day. And at the end of the month, all payments are tallied up and reported to credit bureaus. So rather than having expenses pile on over the course of a longer period of time like with a credit card, Extra acts as a debit card while still giving you the ability to build credit. Extra is great for people like me who are new to credit and just trying to build or rebuild a good credit score. But it's also an amazing tool for basically anyone looking for a safe safer way to experience building credit. It connects to your existing bank account, so it's impossible to spend more than what you already have. And because you would be auto paying so quickly, there is 0% interest. On top of this, you're able to earn 1% in points for your everyday purchases such as coffee, gas, and even regular monthly bills, which you're able to spend in Extra's exclusive reward shop. Use the link in my description to sign up for Extra and start building your credit with a debit card. Big thank you to Extra for sponsoring this video, and with all that being said, let's move on to today's topic. Sun and Moon Medals are found throughout the entirety of Sonic Unleashed. You're able to collect them pretty much anywhere, the hub worlds, the main missions, and even the side missions. There are 400 of them in total, 200 Sun Medals and 200 Moon Medals. And while this might not sound too egregious on the surface, the metal collecting manages to be the biggest thing holding back Sonic Unleashed. Alright Chomix, you got a lot of explaining to do before the Unleashed mob shows up at your front door with torches and pitchforks. Yeah, I know. I can already hear the furious typing sounds in the comment section telling me that I just suck at the game or something, but just hear me out. The core issue with them is that they're tied to progression, meaning you have to have a certain amount of both sun and moon medals in order to progress to the next level. This isn't an inherently bad thing, after all, other games are able to pull this off just fine. But there are a few reasons why it doesn't work in Sonic Unleashed case. The first and most simple reason is that the metal requirements are extremely strict. Many players end up finding themselves stuck at a metal collecting bottleneck. Oh, you want to go to the next stage? Sorry, idiot, you don't have enough medals. Go back and collect more. <laughs> That'll only take you, what, a few hours? Usually isn't that bad. But this can totally happen if you're unaware how strict the requirements are, especially towards the end of the game. And even if you are aware, during my most recent playthrough where I specifically went out of my way to collect as many as possible, I still found myself stopped dead in my tracks at a metal roadblock on several occasions. This means either one of two things. I need to be spending way more time in each level to search every inch for metal so I can do it all in one go, or I need to replay levels a bunch of times and search every inch for metal so I can make up for the metals I missed from playing the game somewhat leisurely. Sorry if that was too much to ask for, it won't happen again. 
both of these methods of playing through the game are an incredible disservice to Sonic Unleashed's amazing level design. And this segues straight into my second point. The metal collecting completely goes against the fundamentals of Sonic's core game design. You play a Sonic game, you obviously want to go fast and enjoy the levels by doing so, but the game punishes you for doing exactly this. Because you get locked out of progression due to metal collecting bottlenecks, you have to take it extremely slow in every single level to search for metals, which ruins the otherwise 10 out of 10 level design. Sure, the level design doesn't physically change or anything, but because your objective shifts from going fast and getting to the end of the level to, hey, we need to search every inch of this level to find metals or else we're screwed, the way you interact with and experience the level design is completely different, and not for the better. The best comparison I can think of is Team Chaotix from Sonic Heroes. As Team Chaotix, you go through the exact same levels as all of the other teams, but because their objectives are to find a bunch of collectibles rather than getting from point A to point B, the way you experience the level design for each stage is completely different. And spoiler alert, it's worse. Sonic Unleashed is the fastest Sonic has ever been in a boost game, but the way that this game is structured doesn't allow you to fully enjoy that. The metal collection system completely dictates the way you play the entire game. You can't just go fast and play it like a normal Sonic game. It conditions you to be wary of going fast, because if you do, you blow past critical items needed to progress, and it leaves you to suffer the consequences later on. The metal collection is a complete conflict of interest to the core Sonic gameplay. The metal collection system is something that's debated online every once in a while, and there's a handful of common counter arguments to these criticisms that I just want to smack down right here now. The first counter argument is get good. Trust me, I'm a firm believer in get good. I love challenging games with high skill ceilings that push you to improve. But here's the thing, get good at what exactly? Memorizing the 400 metal locations? Nobody, especially on a first playthrough, should be expected to do that, or even can do that. You either need to follow a guide step by step, which is super lame, or just have several playthroughs worth of experience. If your game requires an entire playthrough of pre-existing knowledge just to not have an extremely frustrating and difficult time with the metals, I'm sorry, but that's just bad game design. It's hardly even a skill issue at that point, it's just memorization. There's nothing wrong with memorization, in the short term, like memorizing a boss attack pattern for example, but memorizing an entire route in a game that takes on average 11 hours to beat, I think that might be a bit unreasonable. But Chowmix, you don't have to memorize the metal locations, all you have to do is hit your head against a wall and chart out every inch of the level so you can get them all in one go. Exactly. There are no appealing options here that just let you play the game normally without some kind of catch. The next counter argument I want to immediately smack down is the Mario comparison. I often see people say something along the lines of, well, Mario does it in his games, how come he doesn't get any criticism? Despite what some people may want you to believe apparently, Sonic is not a collectathon like 3D Mario. At least he isn't supposed to be, given everything else about his game design. They're hardly comparable in my opinion. In Sonic games, you get from point A to a predetermined point B. In Mario games, even within the same level, point B changes depending on what star or shine sprite you're going for. I generally consider Sonic to be a lot more linear than Mario because of this. And not only in terms of objective, but also very literally. Sonic levels are made up of long corridors, stretching paths, and winding roads. Yeah, Sonic games have multiple pathways and whatnot, but they aren't all that open. Because Sonic is so fast, his levels have to be so much longer and stretched out because he covers way more ground than Mario. Not only does that mean you have so many more potential nooks and crannies to search for collectibles in, but it also means that backtracking in general is a lot less viable. Mario levels aren't as long and expansive, which lets you get to and from any point in the map relatively quickly. Everything is packed into a tighter space, so Mario can easily circle around the entire map and find things efficiently. Hmm. That sounds a lot like the treasure hunting levels from Sonic Adventure 2. It's almost as if the level design needs to be specifically made to accommodate these collectathon elements if you're gonna make your game have collectathon elements. My point is that collectathons require a lot of backtracking, which is made much more difficult and time consuming when the levels are so expansive and stretching. For the final awful counter argument, we have the Sonic Generations comparison. This is definitely the weakest counter argument here, and I'm pretty sure anyone that makes it knows it. Sonic Generations also also has collectible items hidden throughout each level in the form of red rings. And that's where the similarities end. There are only 90 red rings as opposed to the 400 medals in Sonic Unleashed, and most importantly, they are not tied to progression. All they do is unlock extra things for the gallery mode. But besides the optional red rings, Sonic Generation 
Legends does have a progression system, where you're required to complete two extra missions per zone in order to obtain keys to progress to the next set of zones. But even this has almost no similarities to the medals besides the fact that they allow progression. First, you aren't replaying levels. These extra missions are complete rearrangements of existing levels, so the level design is mostly unique. And second, you aren't searching the levels to collect anything. The key is rewarded to you upon getting to the end of the level. These extra missions don't dictate the way that you play the levels, and they're hardly egregious. In fact, I really like a lot of these extra missions. A lot of them have cute little gimmicks, and they can all be beaten in like a minute or two. The metal collection system in Sonic Unleashed really just goes against everything Sonic is all about. So hypothetically, just for fun, what would be a possible solution to fix it? I can already hear the Sonic Unleashed Wii fans in the back grinding their teeth with their hands raised. Yes, I'm actually a pretty big fan of how Sonic Unleashed on the Wii handles metal collecting. First, rather than 400 total medals like in the HD version, the Wii version only has a total of 174. On top of this, medals are collected by simply completing the levels. The amount of medals you receive depends on your rank, so if you get an S rank, you'll end up getting 3 medals. This alone alleviates the worst parts about the medal collecting from the HD version. It's a lot less strict, it's actually tied to skill, and it allows you to play the levels like an actual Sonic game. Look, I don't mind having certain requirements to progress through a game. It's actually quite a common thing. The issue is that Sonic Unleashed, at least the HD version, can't decide what it wants to be. By combining two contradicting gameplay philosophies, it has the player playing a Sonic game in the most unsonic way possible, which in my opinion holds this game back from being undoubtedly amazing. Now, if you've still got your angry comment queued up after all that, hear me out on just one last thing. If you're watching this video, especially up until this point, chances are you're probably a pretty big Sonic fan. You may even be pretty involved in the Sonic community, which is totally why you should subscribe, by the way. Just saying. Sonic is a huge IP. Sonic Unleashed alone sold almost 2.5 million copies. And you have to realize that the Sonic community makes up only a percentage or two of that number. We are in the minority by a massive amount. A lot of our love for Sonic is pretty unconditional, and we have a lot higher of a tolerance for bullshit in our Sonic games because of this. So something we might be able to power through might not be something the other 98% of people who have played this game are willing to put up with. This is a huge bias that we have to recognize when talking about these things. When I say the biggest thing holding back Sonic Unleashed, I mean the thing holding it back from being accepted and well received by this 98% of people. If you remember what I said earlier, this game didn't go over too well with the average player. You can see it in basically everyone's feedback when this game came out. However, the general consensus has kind of done a 180 since then. Or at least it seems that the general consensus has done a 180 since then. I think it's mostly because a large chunk of the people playing this game nowadays are people within the Sonic community. The general audience who played this game back when it first came out and complained about it have long since moved on. The issues with Sonic Unleashed didn't magically go away over time. It's the people that voiced these issues that did. People tend to get pretty defensive over any criticism towards Sonic Unleashed. And I get it, it sucks to have your favorite game in the crosshairs like that. Especially one like Sonic Unleashed that was ripped to shreds back in the day. But I do think Sonic Unleashed has flaws, and one of the biggest ones comes from the metal collecting. Sonic Unleashed is at its best when you're replaying the levels not having to worry about collecting medals. And that's unfortunately only really after you've already beaten the game. Don't get me wrong, I hope we can see challenges on a similar level to Unleashed in the future, but the metal collecting just ain't it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw, leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. I upload videos on a near weekly basis. In the comments below, let me know what you think about the metal collecting system from Sonic Unleashed. And to take that discussion even further beyond, make sure to join our community discord. I'll leave the link to that in the description. And last but not least, you know I gotta thank my amazing channel members. You all are absolutely awesome and I can't thank you enough for your amazing support. Thank you so much. If you'd also like to become a channel member for only $2, along with getting some pretty awesome perks, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description for more details. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.